Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. Thursday, May 28th, 2020 at the hotel here in Waco, Texas. In the Texas area, pretty big area, doing some testing of different pieces of equipment in anticipation of the upcoming Atlantic hurricane season, which has already given us two tropical storms, Arthur and Bertha, both of those affecting North Carolina and South Carolina. Bertha making landfall yesterday. Now it's up in uh, northwest Pennsylvania, that vicinity, the leftovers of it. And um, we're testing the weather balloon today after testing unmanned cameras yesterday. Spread them out over a pretty big area um, from Hillsboro, Texas, which is north of where we are here in Waco, all the way down to Austin. And then we drove and actually did some real-life storm chasing yesterday, chasing after those storms. It was quite an experience. I'll show you some video of that in a moment. But we got to test these pieces of equipment that we would use in hurricanes to make sure they're going to work for us in a potential upcoming hurricane. And it's just nice to do so under, you know, weather conditions that are not just bright and sunny with butterflies everywhere. Nothing against butterflies, but hey, you know, when the weather's exciting, it's kind of good to test the equipment during that and get kind of a real world feel for how that equipment will do during a hurricane. We want to make sure we are ready. So today is the big weather balloon test. And I'll talk about that at the end of the discussion. First of all, in the Southeast Pacific, this area here looking like it could develop and become a tropical depression or a tropical storm. Overall, the conditions in this region are favorable with uh, this Central American gyre and just overall uh, Kelvin wave coming through, fertile conditions. However you slice it, this region looks like it wants to produce a tropical cyclone, and that's the bottom line. So you folks uh, in Central America, and you can see it on the satellite picture here, some energy starting to gather in this vicinity. So you guys up here in El Salvador, Guatemala, extreme southeastern Mexico, and even up into the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, that whole area, this is going to be affecting you because of heavy rainfall. Uh, a lot of energy down here that still needs to get its act together and bundle up, as it were, and it's trying, but it's taking a while. It's a slow process, and oftentimes we see that with these wind shifts that come in here, and you got the westerly to, to uh, southwesterly winds, usually around the 5,000-foot level, and their trades are coming in from the Caribbean and the Atlantic Basin this way, and that whole region just starts to get more energized, but it takes time. So nothing rapid going on right now, and it's, again, still late May. It's not August where conditions become much faster to evolve. We're just not seeing that yet, uh, which is a good thing. In the Atlantic Basin, of course, nothing going on for the time being. We do have the remnants of Bertha up here in western Pennsylvania. Heavy rain associated with that. The Weather Prediction Center takes over the responsibility for tracking these systems, it used to be the Hydro Meteorological Prediction Center, and they just shortened it to Weather Prediction Center. And uh, there you go. It's moving north at 30, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Well, let's just do it now, shall we? Really can't pick it out on infrared satellite, but it's up here. Nice stream of moisture still tapped from the Atlantic coming across the eastern Car Carolinas through Virginia up into Pennsylvania. I'll show it to you better what Bertha looks like uh, on the vorticity signature in just a moment. Meanwhile, again, here's all that energy trying to get itself together down here in the southeastern Pacific. Otherwise, the flow of wind, you can clearly see lots of westerly wind, uh, upper level low right here, which this might try to become something, as they say. We'll see. And then another huge upper level low uh, sitting over in the nation's midsection. This is one of the reasons we had severe weather in and around southeast to central Texas yesterday, and um, this upper level low is going to take a bit of time to fill, as we call it. The low pressure fills in and then moves on, being replaced by a big dome of high pressure out here. That's, that's coming, but it ain't here yet, as they say. So nothing really going on in the tropics to um, hang your hat on in terms of any significant development chances again. Need I remind you, it's just late May. And, you know, although things have started quickly, 
Um, it's still late May, and climatology roots against prolific development. All right, so the vort signatures, the vorticity signatures, there is the signature of Bertha. So there's still some low-level spin. Low levels of the atmosphere, surface to 5,000 feet. That's the lower part of the atmosphere, and that's where you can see this energy, this spin in the atmosphere, and with the remnants of Bertha there, that is right there. Um, here's some energy out over the open Atlantic that may try to pinch off and get over those fairly warm waters long enough to try to develop into something. Hey, there's children outside the hotel room. Not mine. Not my children. Um, and then down here in the southeastern Pacific, there's the energy slowly trying to get itself together and form the tropical cyclone in that part of the world. All right, so some interesting graphics to show you. This is the Global Tropics Hazards and Benefit Outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, and this shows you all about the Madden-Julian Oscillation um, in different areas where they're expecting below average rainfall, above average rainfall, temperatures, tropical cyclones, that kind of thing. And what I want to do first is to click on this, and let's zoom in so we can see the area that I am most interested in. So valid from the 27th of May through June 2nd. Let's just highlight that better there. Uh, this is what we're looking at. So kind of a wet pattern in this green area. And then the red indicates fairly high confidence in tropical cyclone formation. Uh, dry conditions out here, that's what this yellow is. Okay, so this will really become helpful, uh, especially in the peak months of the hurricane season, but it's helpful now too. So then the next week, week two here, see, valid from June 3rd through the 9th, this hatched area, the candy cane looking striped area, whatever, um, is medium confidence or medium chance or con whatever probability uh, of tropical cyclone development. And that is owed to the fact that we're seeing this enhanced Madden-Julian oscillation work its way around the globe. It sets up shop over here. Uh, what we call favorable vertical velocities in the upper parts of the atmosphere where the air is rising instead of sinking. You add to that these smaller um, Kelvin waves that come through, what we call convectively coupled Kelvin waves, and we could see an active period coming up as we start the official start of hurricane season. And if we look around Twitter, I love sharing. I don't know everything. I try to make that very clear that I continue to learn. I like to learn from people. I've never met Philippe, but he is pretty smart. I like his annotated maps there that he does. And um, he's talking about all this, that, you know, even as Bertha weakens, as he was saying, the tropics remain very active for the month of May. And he's discussing this upper-level trough that's out over the subtropical Atlantic, southeast of Bermuda, and the developing Central American gyre, uh, down around Central America, of course, that could result in heavy rain and maybe even tropical cyclogenesis, that's that TCG, near Central America. Great analysis by Philippe. Check this out when you get a chance. Somebody's on vacation. <laughs> Outside. Hey, it's Waco, Texas, man. Everybody's having a, they're, they're partying in Waco, I guess. Um, family's vacationing. That's good to see. As long as you, I guess, be careful in this day and age. Anyhow. It's usually my kids that make the noise. I'm not used to other people's kids making noise during my updates. <laughs> it's just funny. The feature southeast of Bermuda, uh, aided by forcing for ascent downstream, etc., etc. Anyway, fascinating stuff. Check it out. If you know your meteorology, this stuff's really neat to see. And that we might have a um, transition pathway, as he talks about, to a weak setup that could create genesis of a subtropical cyclone. So the bottom line, if we go back to this satellite picture, don't be surprised if we get a subtropical system, meaning that the winds and the energy are spread out over a larger area, it's not as concentrated, it's kind of a hybrid subtropical system may be developing there <clears throat> in the coming days. Furthermore, Philippe talks about, and this is so cool to see, the system that poses the larger threat is the large Central American gyre organizing in the eastern Pacific. 
and the GFS is suggesting that a tropical cyclone tries to quickly develop from the broad vortex, and that would be in the southeastern Pacific, and it moves inland. Then the overall gyre, the overall circulation pattern remains and tries to maybe grab a lobe of energy and develop into a tropical cyclone, as we have seen over and over again on the GFS, on the Canadian and other models uh, once we get into early June. So we'll stop the animation on the last frame there. So this gets left behind, so to speak. It remains, even after we might get development out of the Pacific that moves inland, you still have all this energy down here, this big giant pocket of energy. And that's the key, is because it's very large and spread out, it takes a while for something to close off and bundle that energy. So this is going to be a long process. So do me a favor. Don't get too hung up on every model run, GFS, Euro, Canadian, whatever they are that you like. And the 18Z has a big hurricane coming here. And the 6Z doesn't. And the 0Z, it's back. And the 12Z tomorrow, it's up into New Orleans and whatever. And you go, oh, well, that's 268 hours out or 312. Come on, we're smarter than that. Look at the overall symptomatic setup. The tropics show us symptoms, or signs is a better word, that things are going to be changing. And that is the key here. This is the pattern that can produce activity for the Atlantic Basin, but just because it can doesn't mean that it will. So don't get too hung up on each model run from the deterministic models. All right, rainfall and other awesome things. I, I suggest you follow Philippe and tell him I said hello. Right? Then you know what they say when go to Bob's Barbecue and tell him I sent you and you get a free sandwich or whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, I like these folks, man. Philippe, Eric Webb, Jack Sillen, there's others. You know, look how much we've learned from Levi Cowan over the years as an example. Twitter. The good side of it can be an awesome place. All right, so what's happening in the model world? Speaking of models, uh, 12Z GFS from today, 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, nice area of high pressure out over the Atlantic. Here's our vorticity or energy that Philippe was talking about. And then down here in the southeastern Pacific, not much coming together just yet. So we put this into motion one frame at a time. And there's a little bit, let's just focus on, there's Bermuda right there. Yeah, you know, it's just large, kind of spread out. We'll see what happens. It could, it could get itself together enough, but the GFS doesn't look that enthused about it overall. See that? We go back, go forward. We're at 72 hours there. Also, I'll draw your attention. There's the CAG, the Central American Gyre, tropical cyclone, probably weak overall, not a powerful hurricane or anything like that, but Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, those areas, you only need inches of rain, and in many cases it's tens of inches of rain with these systems, uh, you can get a lot of flooding, and that of course can be very problematic. Moving on out to 96 hours, 120, and we'll just go to 144, and that's enough. GFS trying to resolve, you know, there's a cyclone there in the modeling, little piece of energy there, bottom line. And look, this illustrates what I was telling you. Look, westerly winds here coming in and south-southeast to southeast here. This whole area, that's your gyre. Isn't that cool? That's what it looks like in the forecast modeling. What Philippe was showing in his analysis, if I can click on it, thank you. Uh, where'd it go? Right there. Just cool stuff. All right, yesterday... I uh, was out, like I said, doing some good old-fashioned storm chasing. You don't chase hurricanes. You intercept them. You do chase storms. you got to chase them down, and then you do what you want with them. You can get in front of them. You can go under them. Catch the hail core. Don't catch the hail core. Get video. Like Reed Timmer, launch rockets into them. Hey, it's a free country. Do what you like. We wanted to uh, get out and just see the beauty of it all out there near Comfort, Texas, leaving San Antonio and vicinity. This is what our view looked like. Mute it, widescreen, and the Twitter gives us low resolution, but man, that supercell was amazing. I'm telling you what, that was absolutely incredible. Coming over that rise 
and it spills out in front of us. That was a huge, huge uh, hail core underneath that sucker. Absolutely amazing. Uh, had the help of uh, Brent, one of our patrons from the U.S. Virgin Islands. He came with my friend Mike Farrow helping out with the driving. And I wanted to show you this. Uh, got some, this is a good lightning strike that the vehicle cam captured right here. Bam! And then, uh, down near, oh, what was that place? Uh, can't remember. Somewhere between Comfort and further south, back towards San Antonio and some country road. Hail covering the ground four to six inches deep. Look at that. I scoop it up. I mean, it's like somebody took one of those ice makers, like at Zaxby's. And just let it loose. You ever go to Zaxby's and you get that ice for your drink? It comes out like that, at least when I've seen it. And just phenomenal. Nature is absolutely incredible. And I really appreciate our patrons uh, helping out with the funding for this. Crowdfunding, that's what we're able, that's how I'm able to do this. Man, it's awesome. So the main reason we're here is this. Want to launch the weather balloon today, Herbie. The Hurricane Research Balloon. This is what it looked like in 2016 when we tested it. That's the payload there. This is Pratt, Kansas. I'm about 70 pounds heavier in that video, but I digress. There it goes. And uh, the idea is to carry the payload up to the stratosphere above 90 to 100,000 feet. And the payload sends back information. The two GoPros on there record video. So it's kind of like a sounding device from the surface to the stratosphere and back, and we want to launch this in the eye of a hurricane. We've done that one time. That was Hurricane Nate. It was at night, so we didn't get to see much, except when the lights of Biloxi and D'Iberville were in the shot, but we got really good data, and that was amazing. 107 below zero in the stratosphere above Hurricane Nate. That was unexpected, and the track of it was interesting. But that's the view from 88,000 feet above Kansas in 2016. And by the way, you can look that up on YouTube, Tracking the Hurricanes 2016. That's part of that documentary. So that's what Herbie's all about. It bursts. That's what it's supposed to do. Once it reaches burst altitude, the low pressure up there allows the balloon to expand until it pops. Parachute deploys. Payload falls back to Earth. It tells us where it is <clears throat> via different beacons and we go find it pretty simple right there's the parachute pretty pretty cool so that's what we're going to be doing later today we're going to launch up here in west north of waco a little town called west the high altitude um hub site here really nice dot uh, org site habhub.org has a predictor and it's it's pretty good it's not like you launch here and if you put in this the correct parameters and it ends up going way over here. You get the shape and the overall footprint of what's supposed to happen, and we use that when we file our NOTAM with the FAA. Not many planes flying around thanks to that stupid virus, and yes, it is a stupid virus. I don't like the virus. It sucks, and so it's making it so that there's not many airplanes up there. People aren't traveling, but you still have to file notice to airmen and let them know, and women, uh, that there's going to be a balloon the size of a house passing through airspace. And if you see it, avoid it and don't wig out. And so we file the NOTAM or NOTAM, and uh, there you go. That's our projected area, and I better hurry up, so we got to get ready. we got to get everything ready to go. So we're going to stream from the ground the whole process, uh, and you'll be able to watch. So later this afternoon probably 3 o'clock Texas time, so 4 p.m. Eastern. Check the YouTube if you're a subscriber on YouTube. Make sure your notifications are active, right? So you get notified if I'm streaming, and we'll put it all out there live for you, all right? And again, seriously, we are supported through crowdfunding right there. Patreon.com slash Hurricane Track if you want to become a part of it. You all are the investors that help to make this happen. And instead of a subscription where you pay money and you get a magazine in the mail, it's like a cooperative. It's amazing. People working together, the interaction that we have, and it allows us to do things for the greater good at the end of the day. That is what it's all about. So 
my absolute sincere appreciation to our patrons who make all of this possible. All right? Thanks for tuning in as always. I appreciate that too. Even if you're not in the position to be a patron, I'm glad you're watching. Very important. I'm Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com. We'll see you live uh, from Waco as you travel up to launch the balloon in just a few hours.